Hey, welcome back. Getting ready to do some trapping. I've applied for a special permit to use leg hold traps. Here in the state of Florida, they're not legal without a special permit. And there's a lot of criteria you have to go through in order to get that permit. And it's here at my farm. And basically it's for livestock depredation or harassment. Uh, poultry would be included in that. But you do have to go through some specific steps in order to get this thing approved. And they've told me that I'm going to be approved, just haven't gotten the permit back. But in the meantime, I'm going to get a couple of traps ready. I'm going to try some Bridger traps and I'm adding rubber jaws to them. So take a look at that. All right, so this is what's called a Bridger number two. It would be good for coyotes, bobcats, foxes, bigger stuff. It's an offset trap. You can see it's got a, a big gap in here. Now this particular trap, the reason I've, I've ordered this one is I have some that have a flat they have a bar across the top so that the whole surface is flat inside. And they're also offset. They cannot close completely. But what I've done is I want the rubber jaw traps, but they don't offer them in the dogless. And the dog, a dogless trap has the pan where it holds the jaws without the piece that comes over the top. So what's called a dog on a trap is the little piece, and I'll put a picture of it up that flips over the top and actually holds one side down. I don't like those, I don't think they're as good. So we're gonna add some rubber jaws to these. I ordered the kit to do it. Not hard, these do not come pre-drilled, but that's not really a big deal. You can drill the holes yourself if you need to. So this strap, metal strap, will go across the top of the trap. And if you look at this piece here, you can see that this side is made to actually go in the jaw of the trap, whereas this side is made to go in there, or that that piece goes in here. So just have to open the trap up a little bit and put this in the way it's supposed to go and then let it close, and it'll hold these pieces in place while I clamp it and then pre-drill my holes. All right, so basically I stood on it where I could get, to get the tension off the jaws. Put this piece in, I'm gonna do this side first. That piece fits right there perfectly. So now I just have to drill the holes. If you, if you order a trap that comes with the rubber jaw already on it, normally this piece would be inside, but you, then you'd have to deal with the dog, which I, I just don't like that setup as well as I like these. So I'm just gonna pre-drill the holes. I can bolt this side in, then I'll take the tension off, get the other side set and do the exact same thing. Not much to it. One thing I didn't neglect to mention, and I had to go and get mine, is if you're doing this with the Bridger setup, um, you're gonna need a 5 30 seconds drill bit. These are 1 8 in order not to booger up the threads. I moved it up to 5 30 second just to, to tighten everything up, so you'll have to have that. But one side just about done. Got to finish tightening this up and uh, you're going to start on the other side. All right, so that's what it looks like finished. Still an offset trap. Um, just has a uh, soft rubber jaw on it now. And the reason I like those is the, the flat... Um, it's called a modified trap I have up there. It has a flat edge to it. It's still a good trap for releasing animals unharmed. I just like the idea of having the, the soft jaw on the inside as well. So that's why I'm going with these. As quick as I get the permit in, which I'm hoping will be first next week, I'll go ahead and finish this video. We'll, we'll set some lines out here. I've got two areas I'm going to set. Two sets for coyotes, two sets for foxes. Once I get these two problem foxes trapped and out of here, I'll go ahead and move the rest of the sets over and, and work on the coyotes because I'm seeing a lot more sun. All right, well, it's time to start putting in some sets. Uh, received my permit, took the state four business days to issue me the special permit for the steel leg hold traps and also take the red foxes that are, that are harassing the goats. So one of the spots I want to set is here at this 
fallen tree what's left of this stump um, i found a cat carcass right over there by the trees back in the winter and i know i've seen the bigger foxes coming through this area quite a bit this is actually an area that i'm getting ready to pull a fence across and turn into another horse pasture but they're they're coming under holes in the privacy fence and i see them run through here a lot so been a lot of sign there's an old den here so i think what i want to do is set right off the end of this this log and see how it goes to start with i am going to set one in the goat pasture where they've been coming through the fence but if i do it right now the goats are going to see me do it and they're going to come over they're going to mess with it i can i can make it horse proof with the logs and stuff that are around there but the goats can go pretty much anywhere they want and they'll either step in it or they'll just mess it up so i need to wait till i have them shut up to set that one and this is why you can't set traps where the goats can get anywhere near them this is uh the area of the fence where i had the coyote digging underneath that's the old dig holes they've taken it out a couple times i filled it in until they quit doing it i'm not sitting directly there and I'm, i would normally want to sit like right in next to this post and and put the the bait here and i'm sure they're marking this post on a regular basis but the deer run through here all the time very common to see deer coming right down this fence line so what i want to do is i'm going to come just off the fence line and i'm going to put the trap either in here where i can kind of funnel them in maybe put the scent a little bit further back in or, or mark the the brush with it i may mark this tree and put the set in there if a deer does walk in there stick its foot in it'll get right back out all right so a little bit of a change of plans there's a little bit of a dugout spot in here this kind of makes a natural funnel coming off and I'm not worried about the golf cart because the coyotes are used to it. I drive it around here all the time, so they should be used to the smells of it. But right here, coming off the trail, if they come down the fence, there's some female coyote urine in the back, which really reeks. And I went into where the spot was dug out a little bit. That's where I put the set and I put the leaf litter back on top of it kind of loosely. And, of course, this... The brush that's already here makes a natural funnel. If you can, in my opinion, you shouldn't move anything that you don't have to. So the stick that's there, the step stick, was actually over here to the right, but I brought it over here and used it to fill in the air pockets around the trap when I was bedding it. All right, this is where I see most of their tracks, obviously because it's the softest sand out here. But you can see lots of old piles of coyote scat scattered around. There's some that's actually fairly fresh, probably yesterday before it rained. And we've been getting a lot of heavy rain in the afternoons, which is going to make it kind of hard to, to make this spot look like it did before I dug a hole in it. But what I'm thinking makes the most sense is to set it in here kind of has a backstop there they have to come on this side of it in order to get to the scent that's going to be in there because they don't walk through the taller stuff behind it and the deer haven't been coming through there so maybe the deer won't mess with it i'm thinking about putting it right in here and like i said the toughest part is going to be making it match i started to put it back in here might be a little bit easier but one of these two spots is where it's going. I had considered either putting it in around these bushes and I may still put it right here because with the natural growth here and there, it just makes a natural funnel for them to come through, but making that look like it does right now, very difficult, it'd be easy to hide the chain under this. Um, if I put the, the scent in there, they can come to it from the other side. <clears throat> so that's the question. I don't have anything on the backside to keep from just walking up and marking from that side, missing the trap entirely. That's why I really kind of like putting it over here where they're going to have to come in from the side where they've been coming in anyway. And there's a backstop here. So I think that's actually where I'm just going to set it there. 
All right, well, we got some good sun this afternoon. When it dries out that loose sand on top, should blend right in with this here by my feet. And a small stick, which was laying pretty close by. The bitch's urine is in there, and God does it stink. So if they come down here tonight, somebody ought to come over and check that out unless it makes them gag. But hopefully, um, especially in the dark, I mean, they might smell the turned over ground, but I don't think it's going to overpower the smell of that. So at any rate, this is not a how-to video. If you want to know how to trap using steel leg hold traps, there are a lot of guys that have videos on that that do this for a living. This is just me managing predators. And these are the sets I'm using in the way I'm using them. Are they perfect? Probably not. I'm sure I have a lot to learn from the guys that do this all the time, but they're out and we're gonna check them in the morning and see if anything's in there.